Hey, 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 welcome everyone to Sim Aviator, guys. And in today's video, we will be reviewing the Honeycomb Alpha Yoke. Hit the like button and if you're new to the channel, make sure to subscribe. I do flight simulator streams every single week. And with that being said, guys, let's jump right into the video. 30, 20, 10. You'll be mounting your yoke on this right here. It has a dual mounting solution. So if you guys can see here, we have this covering for the suction kind of thing. It's actually a 3M cup and then basically if you get rid of this and then just put it right here, it should stay as is. However, I'm not using this as a mounting solution. So what we have right here is the two metal pieces of mounting devices so all you gotta do is put them on here uh, like that there we go and then just tighten it that's your mounting where you securely mounted and now we're gonna go ahead and put our yoke on it so as you guys can see there is this slot right here that would go on this one so let's go ahead and put it and tighten it up from the back side So that's it. We have our yoke mounted on this system right here. Um, the next thing we're going to do is get the USB-C cable that we have here and put it on the back side. There we go. As you guys can see, the lights have come on here indicating that it's on. There's a button right behind here where you can actually change the brightness of this light here. Um, I hope it's coming through nicely in the video, but you can have it full brightness or you could have it off. I like to keep it at one level of brightness just as an indicator that the yoke is um, working and it's connected properly. Anyway, that's our yoke. Very nicely mounted, very sturdy. Obviously the yoke, it actually has a very nice tension on the yoke, um, at least on the elevator part, it is like a real airplane as to the farther you push it, the more resistant it gets. So you know, that would be something that would help with your trimming. The next thing we have right here is the start switches. So it's the off position, there's right magneto, left magneto, boat, and then start. We'll go through all these buttons when we go inside the simulator to test these out. But also we have the alternator button, the master switch, bus 1, bus 2 switches, and then you have beacon light, landing light, um, taxi, nav, and strobe lights. So that's on the front end. On the yoke, it's actually connected um, with an ethernet cable here on both sides. So that also kind of adds to the resistance on the ailerons. And the ailerons are slightly lighter and the resistance is not as much as the elevator but it's it's still pretty solid and you know it centers itself very nicely with some oscillations there. We have switches here and on this side this is your hat switch that you would be using to look around. For airliners I like to use this white switch as an autopilot disconnect or autopilot disengage button and then this is your trim A and trim B which is actually pretty impressive that they actually have like two trim buttons and you need to basically push or pull on both of them for the trim to work um, especially on X-Plane since they, they actually implemented the code to have the, true, have the two different trims on this side we have another trim like switch which can probably be used for rudder trim or aileron trim um, not much used on flight simulators, so currently I'm not using it. There's another button right here, and then there's another red big button right here. Also, one more button that we have is on the back side of the yoke, and that button can be used as your push to talk if you're flying on WATSIM or any other live ATC network. So guys, that's the overview of the yoke and its buttons. Let's jump 
into the simulator all right guys so as you can see we are inside the simulator now and we'll be testing the yoke on the Cessna 172 because these panels right here are gonna be exactly similar to the ones we see in the Cessna but before we get started with the yoke I just want to point out an important thing right here the difference between a joystick and a yoke and how it can change the way you fly and we'll obviously go through how good it feels flying with the yoke um, in comparison to the joystick as we are in the air the thing about flying with joysticks is that it's actually really nice to fly with it it has a really good tension on the springs same tension all the way around the only thing that I can point out here is that guys so when you want to turn right um, I don't know the exact angle this makes with the base I'm pretty sure this is not more than 30 degrees I'm pretty sure it's not more than 30 degrees but it might be less so what happens is for a 30 degree deflection on the joystick you get a 90 degree rotation something similar to this inside the airplane so when you're actually flying with a joystick a one degree deflection to either side is going to be equivalent to three degrees of deflection inside the cockpit and that is something that reduces your accuracy in terms of being able to you know make fine adjustments and again we'll do that once we're in the air and i'll show you how it is with the yoke but as you can see with the yoke you get a 90 degree deflections on either side and this is very specific to honeycomb and you know the other more expensive version the yoko the yoke but any other cheaper yoke you know Saytech or you know the other ones out there those only have like about 45 degrees so which is again essentially a one degree rotation would be equivalent to a two degree rotation inside the cockpit so that is one thing that i really like about this yoke is the amount of accuracy you'll get using this yoke so we're inside the Cessna 172 cockpit right here and you know let's go ahead and start with the startup so you guys can see how these buttons map to the simulator right here as you guys can see these are the buttons that we'll be controlling with the yoke to start a Cessna you turn a battery on first and you'll see that the switch will switch on just like that there we go we have the switch on and after that obviously there's no button for the fuel pump so we'll go ahead and do it manually and then before you start you gotta turn on your beacon light and even on your walk around you actually check all the lights that come on so now you guys can see the beacon light is on if I turn it off it's off so beacon light is on and for your walk around you would usually check the other lights. so let's turn on the landing light so you guys can see that this light has come on here taxi light your nav lights are gonna be the one right here so you'll see this one turn on and then you're gonna see the strobes there we have the strobes there so that's how all of it is working let's jump inside the cockpit and go ahead and turn on the engines here there we go it started let's put the mixture in and bring the throttle out um, put it to 1000 rpm so our plane has started the next thing we want to do is turn on the bus one and the bus two right here um, and that will ensure you have all your radios your transponder and all things like that um, so that's how it is and then to charge your batteries you bring up the alternator so that's right here we're good to go let's get our lights going we're on the runway so nav light strobe lights everything will come on we don't need the pedo heat all right guys so i have changed the camera view a bit so you can actually see the motion of the yoke and everything and some people do say there is a little bit of dead zone on this yoke on both elevators and the ailerons but if you actually use a software to detect that then yes there might be a dead zone for practically being inside the sim there is no dead zone like look at that like there's there's ever so slight movement and the, even the aileron is moving so so don't worry about the dead zone and everything people say this is just amazing no dead zone you know even the slightest of movement will actually get you the deflection inside the sim so let's go ahead and take off this plane right here so as you guys can see it allows me to make very fine adjustments there 
they're gonna have to be a lot and that's that's the beauty of this thing that it is a one-to-one -one match for the real or your simulator airplane and it gives you that much more control over it now there's there's no jerkiness it's it's a very smooth input there so that's that's obviously something that is that improves your experience on the simulator also if you guys want to see this is how the hat switch works if you want to look without the other hand if say for it's on your throttle or anything like that you can definitely use the hat switch to see where you are look on the sides look below to see if your trim is correct that is that we're constantly using this trim if you guys want to see um, I'm turning it and see how it's moving so that is really awesome we're passing the numbers now so let's go ahead and land this thing reducing the power and let's go flaps keep looking on the side once the airport is at a 45 degree angle we'll go ahead and make our base turn and let's turn base now Go flaps 20. Obviously we didn't come right on the turn, but again, this is not a tutorial video. This is a review video on the yoke, so we're not going to judge that, but let's align ourselves with the runway. Look at how small adjustments I can make on this one and you know, it just gives you that precise control. Trim it out for the attitude you want the plane to be at. Coming on to the center line. Coming slightly faster here. Look how nicely it helps us to get on the center line. And power to idle. Let the plane flow and start pulling back. Pull back, don't, don't let it touch down. We had a bounced landing here, but that's for the Cessna guys. It was simply really amazing to control the plane with this yoke and you could actually also do the, some aerodynamic braking. But that's it. Let's come to a full stop and jump into the Boeing 737 cockpit to make sure these buttons work with it. Okay guys, so we are inside the Boeing 737 cockpit as you can see right now. Um, we'll check if these switches work with the ones here. So let's go ahead and turn on the beacon light right here, which is the anti-collision light. So as I switch beacon light on, the light turns on. Um, landing lights are right here. Taxi, 
Um, and we could switch it to strobe. Right. And for runway turnoff, I've assigned these buttons. So we got that. And then this switch right here gives you the wing light. And this gives you the logo light. So yes, guys, you can assign these buttons to other planes as well, provided there's a functionality for them and you should be good to go. So all in all, a really great yoke and I definitely recommend it, guys. So that's all from the Honeycomb Alpha Yoke review, guys. My personal opinion, it is worth every single dollar you spend. It is worth it and again, I can't stress that enough that the yoke has been approved by the FAA for commercial flight instruction guys. You are going to be using an FAA approved yoke and there's nothing that can get better than that. For the honeycomb yoke, it is a big thumbs up for me, no question about that. I hope you found the review helpful and hopefully it will help you in your decision making to buy a yoke for your flight simulator. That's gonna be it from the video. If you enjoyed the content, make sure to hit that like button. And if you're new to the channel, make sure to hit that subscribe button. And I will see you guys in the next video or stream. Signing out, Sim Aviator.